and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is a daily hypnosis session. I think it's number eight, I think. I thought I had pockets at the side of this. This is kind of a, a new jacket I got. It's uh, not jacket, kind of jumper thingy. But the sleeves are a little bit too long. Well, they're not like that, but because I haven't got massively long arms, really. So I try and do these regularly. And would like to do them every day if possible, but it's not always not I'm not always able to do that. But I am today, so I've already done a let me bore you to sleep session earlier, and thankfully it didn't take five hours to upload to YouTube, like previous ones have over the last couple of days. So I'm hoping that the same will happen here. I'll be able to finish this and upload it before I go to bed, which would be nice. So only listen to this or watch, this basically applies to all of my videos, all of my MP3s, only watch or listen when you can safely close your eyes. It's very important because you may get bored, you might fall asleep, you might feel tired. You might be used to listening to my sleep sessions and then be listening to this and be used to the my exciting voice. Uh, doing whatever it does, which might cause you to fall asleep. But this isn't a sleep session. This is a daily hypnosis session based on, it's based on a, diff, a few different things. I just do, I do whatever I feel like doing at the time. But if everything is based around you feeling better at the end to how you did at the beginning. I need to have a drink. So, what I'm going to do is just talk to you. I've got no idea how long the session is going to last, but you'll know that before you start it because you'll be able to see the length. And uh, just another thing. There may be background sounds. I'm not 100% sure, you know, Andre, my ferret, might jump out and start running around and climbing up my leg or knocking the tripod over, which this, uh, the camera's on, or the phone's on rather, because it's an iPhone. I don't know if I'm, it looks a little bit wonky. I might move it around, wait a second. Hmm, I don't think that really did anything. <laughs> I don't think that made any difference. Um, I think the floor is a little bit wonky here. The only way to really find out, I suppose, is if I've got myself a, a snooker table. Now I'd be able to see by whether the balls moved, you know, and stayed still, but I suppose that's an expensive way to do it. You can get those rule things, can't you? Which, I think the metal bit in the middle, there's a, like a piece of water or something with a green bit, and it goes in the middle to tell you if the surface is flat. I think. But I'm not a, I'm not a DIY expert, not, not in that way. So I'm gonna get on with this session ask you to close your eyes, but you don't need to close your eyes because 
it's all about suggestions, it's all about talking about something, it's about, it's about what occurs within you while I'm talking. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's just about, it's not just about how you feel now, it's also about how you feel in a few hours time, or maybe tomorrow and the day after, is the effects of watching my videos. How it affects you in a useful way. Not just in the moment, but also moving forward. And there's a progression there. And each session, although is different, there are similarities. Of course, I'm in all of them. It's my voice. Pretty much be sitting in the same chair. Although you might have a, a different background. Like today, you've got my curtains and a little bit of a radiator and a tiny little bit you can see there, look chair, the back of the chair, all high tech stuff this, I used to have a green screen, or like a, it was green but I think they call it a blue screen but it was, this one was green, no green screen, because it was green, so I could have added background uh, videos, could have done all kinds of stuff but I couldn't be bothered. I just, you know, it's, for me it's not about glamorous videos, it's about just me talking and if you want to, you listening. That's what these things are about and that's really what they've always been about. Now back in 2001, when I first, first thought about doing something like this online. This is what I wanted to do, a daily session. And at that time it wasn't possible really to put videos online or, you know, or MP3s, all that stuff wasn't really uh, available to people like me. But now, obviously it is and it has been for a long time. But I wanted to do something that was every day and without being specific. So it wasn't a specific session, a specific subject. It was more a well-being session. Something that tapped into a part of you. Something that taps into your sense of who you are, or maybe who you wish to be. And that can be, I think that can be a nice place to go, you know, within yourself that safe place and I talk about this I talk about having a safe place that you can go to but it's not just about safety it's about it's about more than that it's about comfort maybe solitude you know uh, Superman he had his uh, fortress of solitude and he'd go there and it was a place for him to regenerate and you know get some energy back and to learn and to be on his own and to sort of like maybe meditate, I don't know. And we've all kind of got that within ourselves, you know, a fortress of solitude and 
I suppose the fortress bit, bit could be that other people don't have access to it. Only you have access to your own place of solitude, your own place of comfort, safety. So maybe a fortress is a good name for it because in some ways it can feel like it can seem quite hard to actually get into it ourselves. Like there's a, you know, it's a protected area that even we can't always get into. But the fact is, we always have access to that. It's just finding your own way into there, your own route into that space. And that space is yours to do whatever you want. So, without being, I am being quite vague, I realise. And I wish I had pockets at the side of this so I could put my hands in my pockets. But I don't. It just feels like it should have pockets there. So, without being vague, for me, it's like a, a room, you know, it, with my eyes closed. I go to this, but it's a room of feeling, it's a feeling, a feeling where there's no pressure, there's no stress, there's no worries, there's no people, there's no past, there's none of that stuff, a place to just be but without any kind of without anybody wanting anything from you without you expecting anything from yourself a place of safety a place that you can enjoy being there and know that it's safe for you to be there. And it's, I suppose, a little bit like going out in the rain, but it's not, you know, when you go out in the rain, it's, it's raining, but it's not really, really raining. It's, you know, it's little bits, just a little, a few drops. And you can maybe even walk to the shop and back and it doesn't, you just had a few drops, you don't really feel it really. But if you was to walk 10 miles or if you was to travel, be outside for maybe two or three hours, you'd eventually be wet. So in a sense, going into this room of, you can call it solitude, you can call it, you can give it whatever name you want to give it, it can be your special den, it could be your library, it could be anything you want to name it. You could name it Horace, or Jeremy, or Vanessa, you know, you can give it a name, whatever you want. Gertrude, Benny Hill, anything. And the more you go in there in that sense of feeling relaxed, the more time you spend in there and that sense of all the worries just dropping off and leaving your body and mind. And the more you do it in the same way, the more you go out in the rain, even though it's not coming down heavy. The more you go into this room and spend time in there, the effects of it starts to last, starts to sink in. So like with the rain, eventually you end up wet, eventually you end up calmer. 
more relaxed, at ease, with a sense of safety. Even when you're not in that space, the effects continue. And I think that's quite nice to have that. If you have an actual physical place to go to, maybe in your home you do have uh, a place that you like to go to be on your own. You know, maybe uh, it's a place where you do a hobby. Um, maybe it is your little library or big library even. And you can have that space. And the more places you have of safety, the more places start to develop where you start to, you maybe notice that feeling of safety. It's as if you're wearing these Shoes made of safety. So that wherever you go, the safety goes with you. You're constantly walking on safety. Walking safely with a feeling of safety. Calm and relaxed. In the same way as if you were about to take a drive and test and you imagine with your your feet on the pedals of the car or whenever your feet touch those pedals or whenever you you know you'd have that sense of confidence or whether you whenever your hands were on the the steering wheel that was a, a, you know, a trigger for your confidence in driving to flow over your body and in your mind. In the same way, those shoes of safety, as you push down on the soles of your feet, walking, can stimulate that sense of safety or for someone in a wheelchair as they push the wheelchair along with their hands pushing the wheels that sense of safety stimulated by the palms of their hands And then you get to a point where you start remembering that sense of safety because it's different for everybody. But with safety comes the ability to see a future, the ability to plan, the confidence to actually realize that you are an amazing person and you can get in touch with that start to really get in touch with that now the more these feelings happen when we talk about them in these videos and sessions it starts to, something happens in your brain. And you start to think about it. 
not just when you're listening to me and taking the words and the ideas and suggestions you know, into your mind and allowing that to spread for your nervous system, setting you up for a future of happiness. But is that that time when maybe tomorrow you might be at work or you might be sitting with a friend, you might be on a train, on a bus, you might, it could be anything, any situation that, that fits in with your life. And you get a sense of safety come over you. you, you feel it, physically, you physically feel it. It might be in your hands, it might be in your shoulders, it might be in your face, in your chest, your back, your legs, it could be anywhere, in your head, it could be anywhere at all that you feel, it could be all of those places, that sense, that feeling of safety, of feeling safe. And one of the good things about this is because it's going to happen naturally, and also because I've mentioned it, it's much more likely to happen as well, because that's just the way our minds work really, that's all, it's nothing, nothing major really. But then you'll have that feeling and you might be at work and you might be, when you have that feeling, you might be looking at your boss or and that feeling of safety that you have is then connected to your boss. So you, that's, that's like another trigger to feel safe. And as you're like maybe waiting for a bus, and you might be just waiting and the bus pulls up, and just unconnected, you have that feeling of safety as the bus pulls up. And then there's, so that's another memory that's been created with something that's got nothing to do with the, the emotion really, but they connect together. That bus pulling up, or that train pulling up, the taxi, uh, it could, as I said, whatever situation, and then you've got that connection, you've got that connection, that emotional connection of safety connected to that. So maybe the day after or a few days later, the bus pulls up and you have that feeling of safety, that feeling of warmth connected with traveling safely home or traveling safely to wherever you're going, to work, to see a loved one, wherever it is that you're traveling to. Maybe you get up in the morning, you're getting ready to go out, and you're walking up to your car, got your keys in your hand, maybe you've done the, the, the alarm thing, you know, to unlock the door, and that trigger, the, the, the sound of that, at the same time, you had that feeling of safety. Unconnected with the car or the noise, but now it's like they've attached themselves to each other. Imagine that, you, got, you see the car, you do the, uh, the key, you might have a key that goes into the lock as well, but there's that connection between the car and the sound of opening the car, even if it's just the sound of the lock turning. You know, when you turn the key, the lock unlocking your mind to more ideas that can help you and to absorb those ideas into your mind, your body. And that safe feeling that you can have 
actually is then connected to those things so that maybe the next time you go to open your car you feel good you feel safe but you might not even be aware of what the feeling is all you know is there's a nice feeling physically and emotionally that feeling of safety is there and by listening to my voice watching these videos it's not just the feeling of safety that this can happen to you know this process could also happen with feelings of confidence self-worth get in touch with what you like about yourself what you really admire about yourself in the same way as there might be something you're looking forward to doing maybe going on holiday maybe uh, going out at the weekend, maybe something, a birthday party, a wedding, who, you know, whatever it is. There's something you just, you just think about that thing. And you might not be jumping up and down doing somersaults and waving, you know, blowing up balloons with excitement, singing a big song and tap dancing. But there's a feeling, you have a feeling of, it's a pleasant feeling. And as you listen to my voice, you can have more of those feelings. With every session that I do, you can experience more of that. More of those pleasant feelings and useful feelings which I would say is more important is the fact that they're useful. Even unpleasant feelings can be useful if it helps you. Such a thing would be pain, physical pain. It's not a pleasant feeling, but it's warning, your body's warning you to seek help for that thing or to stop doing whatever it is you're doing or, you know, in the same way, pleasant feelings, they're kind of encouraging you to do more of that. To feel more of a sense of safety in more places. taking the opportunity as often as possible to have those feelings of confidence and to really allow yourself to get in touch with those feelings. And it is about feelings. I know there's, there's words going on in our mind, we're saying things to ourselves, but during this time with me, it doesn't have to be any of those words, just my words. So when you're listening to me, it's just my voice. There's no other voices, there's no other words, there's nobody uh, being, you know, we've, got, we've all got an internal voice. That's what I mean when I say voices. We've all got our own internal voice and it's not always helpful to us. So it's nice to take a break from that. And the more you listen to me, the more you allow my voice to be there instead of that voice, you know, just for the period of time that you're watching a video or listening to the MP3. It gives you a break from that. So that sense of feeling some relief, relaxation, can also be because you've taken a break from that internal voice that's 
perhaps with you all the time. And maybe you're not noticing it. It's like background traffic. You know, if you move into a house near a motorway and, you know, it's all you notice when you first move in there, just the traffic, traffic. Eventually, start to zone it out. And it's a natural way and it's a way that we, it's a survival thing. I mean, it's, it's a good thing to be able to do if you live near a busy road. I've done it and it's great if you just don't notice it anymore. But traffic, the sound of traffic isn't harmful to you. A voice saying horrible things and putting you down is harmful. So maybe it's time to start noticing those things. Because then you can do something about it when you notice it. There's no point vacuuming a carpet at three o'clock in the morning with all the lights off because you're not going to be able to see what you're doing. There's no point painting the inside of a cave That sounded quite good, I was quite pleased with that, it was quite clever. There's no point painting the inside of a clay. Mind you, if you did it aluminous, like an aluminous, you know, so that you could see it inside. So maybe it would work. But once you notice something, it's just like with microscopes. Once microscopes were invented, once the, the world of microbes and, you know, tiny little things, atoms, were discovered, once you know it's there, you know it's there, you can't, can't ignore it. Therefore, it's something that needs to be addressed and changed. But in a kind way. Because if somebody else was being verbally unkind to you continuously, there's a chance that you would uh, naturally and understandably perhaps be a bit hostile to that person. The problem is when it's you doing it, you don't want to be hostile to yourself because then you're just doing more of the same. So it's about slowing things down, calming that voice, that internal voice, changing it, changing that voice so that it doesn't have the same impact that maybe it once did before you decided to watch my videos and listen to my voice and some things are going to change and it's not a lot you can really do about it but it's going to be a change for the better you'll be more aware of some of that stuff that maybe you weren't listening to before, maybe that was the, the best, that seemed like the best way to cope with it. And it probably was actually at the time. But now it's time to move forward and make changes. So sometimes you can just make a tiny change and it affects everything. I mean, you could buy the most expensive laptop, you know, open it up and just cut a wire or you know just mess around with one of the circuit boards and the whole thing doesn't work sometimes the tiniest little change short circuits a whole the whole thing so you've got this 
maybe it's an unkind voice at times, by changing it, changing the speed of the voice, changing, maybe changing the voice to a little song, maybe making it like a Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or your other, f another favorite animated person, character. And it changes how you feel. And I'll talk more about this in the future, but I want you to think about something, something that you regularly say to yourself. Um, could be anything, could be anything. And I have done this before, I've, I've talked about this before, I've even done this exercise before, I think. So it could be anything. For example, for some reason I like to say that I'm no good at arithmetic, like maths. And something that I've been saying pretty much since I was a kid. And I'm really not very good at maths, to be fair. But if I had a, a leg amputated, I don't need to keep telling myself that I've got, only got one leg. And if I wanted to do something about the maths, I could probably learn a bit more. But you know, I just, my brain doesn't seem to work very well with numbers. But there's a, a, that criticism in my brain it's not there so much now as it used to be, because I don't really care anymore. I think I do all right with what I've got. I use the tools I've been gifted with, which is uh, being able to talk complete nonsense for long periods of time. So if you think of something that you say to yourself maybe quite regularly that is not very nice. You know, uh, it could be, I actually hear people say out loud sometimes when they call themselves an idiot. You know, while they're actually doing stuff and I've worked with people like that and it's, oh, you, and they talk to themselves out loud. So I can't imagine Maybe they're what's going on inside their brain, but if that's what they're going to allow, you know, they're going to tell people what they say. What, how harsh are they inside? So think about something that you say to yourself, and just say it normally how you would normally, and notice how it feels. Something that's unpleasant, a put down. The first question I always ask, and this is my, one of my favorite things to ask, is would you say that to a small child? Would you go up to a small child in the street, in the supermarket, in the mall, at the church, at a wedding, you know, wherever, would you go to the, the little, you know, some little girl in a She's got a dress on and she's really happy and she's like three years old and she's never been to a wedding before and she's a, like one of the flower girls or something. Would you go up to that little girl and say what you've been saying to yourself in your mind? If the answer's no, then why not? If it's not good enough for the, the little girl, why is it good enough for you? If it's not okay to say it to a little girl, why is it okay to say it to yourself? 
you're also important. You're also worth being kind to, aren't you? The next step, the next thing I would say is noticing how it feels when you say that. Just in your normal voice to yourself than the way you normally say it. And now imagine saying it in a different voice. I said it could be Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, uh, Homer Simpson. Uh, it could be. Uh, it could be a, a, so many different. Uh, comedy characters that I can think of. So just pick a comedy voice. Someone that you like, that you watch on television regularly, you love the voice. Uh, it could be some a uh, voice from Family Guy, as I said, from The Simpsons. It could be from your fa favorite sitcom. It could, you know, anyone. And just say that sentence in that voice. With their intonation the way that they speak now. So how does that feel? saying it in a, a different voice, in a silly voice. And there's lots of different versions of this that I can do. And I'll probably, I'm probably gonna do some quite uh, outlandish, make some outlandish videos that are really silly for this, the internal dialogue side of things because it's one of those things that really limits our happiness or increases our happiness and opens up possibilities depending on what we're saying of course if you're saying things uh, in fact do that now say the opposite so if it was oh I'm an idiot I'm really clever. First of all, saying it in the comedy voice, whatever it is we're saying, but the opposite, the like the flip side, the positive side, the nice, a nice thing that you're saying to yourself. Say it in that comedy voice to start with. Do that now. Okay, and just notice how that felt. And I'd like you to say the exact same words, that positive, uh, it could be a compliment, it could be a fact, just something nice, that nice sentence, and say to yourself in your own voice again, in your own voice, the normal voice that you would talk to yourself in your head. Now. Now, how did that feel? How different does it feel when you say it to yourself to how it did when you said it in a, that funny voice? How different did it feel from the other way you were saying it, you know, the, the negative side? And now imagine saying that to yourself, but Increase in the volume twice. So increasing it to twice the, the volume. 
and then say in it again. Now. Just notice how that feels. And what we're going to do, let's give you an idea of how you can feel. You can change the dialogue, the, the volume, you can change. And notice, did it increase the feeling when it was a bit louder? Maybe it was too loud. Just decrease it again. You're in control. Going back to the original, okay, and just say the original sentence, the the one that we said that you said right at the beginning, the let's say it was some negative internal dialogue, something that you would say to yourself. Just remember, we then did it in a com comedy voice, and then flipped it on its side and did a positive version. So just say the original sentence again, how it was originally in your own voice, now. And notice the difference. Notice how it doesn't feel the same, doesn't have the same impact, doesn't fit anymore. Do you know that feeling that you know when you've been doing something maybe for years and then suddenly it just doesn't feel right anymore. You don't want to do it anymore. It could be drinking alcohol, it could be it could be anything, it could be could even be a friendship, it could be uh, a hobby that perhaps you're not that interested in anymore. It could be a particular food that you're just lost interest in, that you used to love eating but now just mm, Mm -hmm. you know, not that bothered about anymore. Because we're always changing, naturally. Uh, we just, I guess we don't always notice when it's happening. But sometimes we really do notice. So how did that feel different? And just be aware of that feeling. And you know, some people find it hard. They kind of, they get, they get it. They get some of the feeling back and they can say the sentence. And then it's like the sentence is there in your mind and some of the letters start just dropping out of it. And it starts to become blurry. And no matter how hard you try, you can't get the words to be clear anymore. It's like it's like you're wearing reading glasses and you put your reading glasses down and the word is blurry. You can't see it. But for some reason, someone's changed the lenses in those glasses and you can't see that sentence anymore. And because you can't see it, the, the, it doesn't have the power that maybe it used to, it didn't have the effect, the emotional effect that it used to. And it's as if it can't verbalize itself anymore because not only are parts missing because a word needs all the letters because some of those letters have just dropped out, but also the blurriness. I mean, it could have been blurry with all the letters and it still wouldn't be any good. But with some of those letters gone, even if it wasn't blurry, it would be no good. But being blurry and some of those letters gone, having dropped off, takes away that any kind of meaning that it might have had, any kind of emotional effect, any kind of negativity that it might have caused, is just it's just diminished, and it's. So sometimes just it's impossible to get it back. It's impossible. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. 
there's lots of different ways that you can change some of the things that we say to ourselves. So you can do some, you can play with this actually, you can, there's a few ideas. Um, another thing is if you, if you think of a, something that maybe you say to yourself uh, and you can actually add a little bit of music to it. So I like the Benny Hill tune. It's just, I think it's probably because when I did training in my training like 20 odd years ago, I think I used the Benny Hill tune in some of the exercises and stuff. And it's kind of stuck with me. I just, because I was brought up watching Benny Hill on television in the early 80s and I loved him. I loved it. And it was silly. It was just, you know, and then there was the music. That's uh, not a very good impression of the tune. Um, and it doesn't have to be that tune. It could be anything. Another one is the Monty Python, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. That's quite a nice uh, song to sing. Um, a silly song. There's lots of these, you know, it could be anything. But when you say something to yourself and it's limiting you, it doesn't have to be a, a something cruel, but it's something you say to yourself that's maybe limiting you. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think. Something that I would say to myself would be, um, why, who's going to watch this video? That could be a thing that I might say to myself. Who's, who's, who's going to be watching this anyway? What, what's the point in making a video? Who's going to be interested in this? So, I've got enough backup to turn that on its head and say, well, actually, over the time I've had a lot of people watching my videos and listen to my MP3s uh, over the last sort of 12 years. So I can kind of do something with that. But something I could do is say it, but then add a tune. And it's not so much it's drowning the words out, but it's making the words less effective and mean less. It's like, oh, so in a sense, I, I, um, why, why bother making this video? Okay, why? And I could, and then stop the tune and say it again. And because the tune makes me smile a bit, and it could be, you could think of anything. Um, see, I, something happened when I was really, when I was about 22, I was working in this factory, and I think of this, and no one else really has found it funny, but I thought it was the most hilarious thing that I'd ever heard, and it still makes me laugh sometimes when I think of it. There's a couple of these incidences, and I think of them, and I don't have to think of the whole thing, just the, the scenario, and it makes me laugh. So if, if I was saying something that's maybe limiting, I think of that, <laughs> that incident, and it changes the, it just, it becomes less stuck. So I'll tell you what the incident was. Um, it's, it's nothing major, it's just... So Andre, my ferret, my, my son Andre, he's named after one of my best friends called Andre, who used to be my boss at this factory that I worked. And I worked with a bloke called Terry. He was, he, we worked together, Andre was the manager, he was like the supervisor. 
So Terry went out, he came back about 15 minutes later and I didn't know where he'd been. So I was just waiting for him to come back. And I said to him, have you, Terry, have you seen Andre? And Terry said to me, yeah, I just passed him in the toilet. I was, I was practically, because my visual was he just pooed Andre out. And I just couldn't stop laughing and passed him in the toilet. It just, um, for some reason it tickled me. And there's another one. Uh, this I was in a second-hand shop. Uh, I don't know, you might call it different things where you are, but it basically it's a place where you give your thrift shop or you give your second-hand clothes or whatever, and they, you know, they sell them onto people for charity. So I was looking at some books, and a man comes in and talks to the staff and says, do you sell braces, you know, like the trouser braces to keep the trousers up? And the lady working in the shop said, no, we don't, but I think if you go around the corner, they sell them in a joke shop. I was just, I couldn't stop laughing. And I, I, was, I thought, it's just, it's funny on quite a few different levels, that one, because I don't think she meant it in a, a rude way. <laughs> but she's basically saying his, his, uh, his choice of fashion was available in a joke shop. Um, so things like that, if you think of something that's tickled you and it still kind of tickles you a little bit, from the past or even recently, something that someone said to you, then you can think of that and it, we think about it as an energy, we think about it as hot and cold, you've got a bath and the bath's hot and that bath is that voice in your mind, so you've got a half, a bath, half full of water and it's scalding hot. You know, you put your fingers in and it's just too hot to keep your fingers in for too long. And you're not gonna put anything else in there until it cools down, obviously. So you think that that put down in your mind saying that, you know, perhaps you're not good enough at something or you're not worthy or you're not uh, pretty enough or you're not fit enough, not thin enough, you know, whatever it is, that's got that voice that might be saying stuff like that, hurtful stuff that's not useful at all. So that's the hot water, that's the thing that, it hurts, it's painful. Like if you put your hand into the water, it's gonna hurt, especially if you leave it too long. If you, you know, but if you start turning the cold tap on and you let the cold water go in, it doesn't take long for that hot water to turn into warm water. And there's a point where it becomes too cool to have a bath in. And you keep emptying more water out and putting more hot water in. And you can never get the hot water back again to the point where you can have a bath because it's too cold. And that's what happens. So when you think about a silly thing at the same time as this or some silly music, so you've got the hot water and the cold water and then that hot water could never be hot again. Now, that brings me to the end of today's uh, hypnotic, what is it I'm doing, daily hypnosis. It's a longer one than normal, but we've got, um, the clocks have gone back or forward or, yeah, back, no, they've gone back today. It's the end of October, so the clocks have gone back, so I've got an extra hour, which is nice. So, because I've got an extra hour, I've done an extra session. One extra 10 minutes on top of this session. 
So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Um, if I'm going to count to three just in case you're a bit zoned out and falling asleep or bored or whatever with me talking. Um, then when I do, you can open your eyes if your eyes aren't already open and just move on with the rest of your day feeling wonderful. One, two, be more aware of your surroundings, be more aware of how you physically feel, how you emotionally feel, noticing that sense of relaxation, that calmness and that safety that you're experiencing now and can experience more of with the coming days and hours and minutes. And every time you hear my voice, you'll naturally feel safe, confident, and relaxed. Three, open your eyes if you want to open your eyes, leave your eyes closed if you want to leave them closed, or continue to have them open if they were already open. Pretty much do whatever you want to do, as long as you feel good, you feel relaxed, you feel calm. And remember that you deserve to be happy. And remember that. It's not just a sentence, it's not just something to say. It's true. This is like a truism. Truism, a true statement. You deserve to be happy. Remember that. And that will play in your mind, those words, I deserve to be happy. And it'll be in a kind voice. And you'll feel good, you'll feel relaxed, you'll feel motivated, you'll feel calm, you feel safe. So this is the end of this session. I will be back again. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you like my videos on YouTube, please subscribe, like the videos. And all my videos and MP3s are available to download on my website, jasonnewland.com. And please share and tell others about this wonderful secret service of mine. It's not a secret, but it's... Uh, not that well known really. So please spread the word. Lots of love. Mwah. Bye. That was a bit, don't know what that was about. Anyway, see you later.